Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for another unboxing and today we're actually going to be doing a retro unboxing and this is going to be for the South Park Series 3 Satan figure. Um, got this recently at a toy show. I have not seen this figure carded in a long time. Got a really great deal on it. The guy I got it from, a uh, super cool guy, uh, worked out a deal ski with me and um, yeah, really excited to open this figure because um, you know I grew up on South Park it was such a cool show for me. I mean, obviously, I know that's not necessarily something for kids. Uh, but whether you watch the show or you just saw the movie, uh, this is a pretty. This is probably one of the greatest characters in the history of that show, uh, as well as the movie. Almost wish there was a, maybe a Saddam Hussein figure to put with it. Um, but that's also kind of an inside joke that I can enjoy with somebody else in my life, and um, it's kind of funny. But we're gonna open them. We're gonna see how this figure is, uh, Lucy Goosey. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to have a lot of articulation. I do like it in the packaging. The big giant clearance sticker on it um, is kind of a throw off for me. Uh, so I may as well just open it. That area is starting to be a little bit of yellowing on the bubble. The card itself is actually not terrible, surprisingly. It's in decent enough shape. Um, but realistically, uh, I feel like this one needs to be opened and he needs to be put in the DTOV uh, with all the other random cool retro stuff. Retro stuff that I have. This figure was made by Mirage Studios. Uh, it almost seems McFarlane-esque, oddly enough. Um, it doesn't appear to have a lot of articulation, which I kind of expect for a figure like this. I think it's going to be more of just kind of a, um, what I call a statue-esque figure, where you might be able to move the arms or the legs a tiny bit, but for the most part, uh, posability is going to be pretty minimal. But we're still going to check them out, see what the quality of the plastic is. Uh, how good the paint is on it, because all those things are important. Uh, and sometimes, if you've learned anything from any of my previous unboxing videos of action figures, is that sometimes how a figure looks on the outside of the package is very deceiving to how good it is out of the package. So, there's out of the bubble. And even right now, for instance, having them outside of the packaging, the reds are a little, br a little bit brighter, more vibrant. All the colors just seem to pop more, not being behind... Uh, that plastic. He does have some old school tie downs back here. Uh, obviously, this is before they really started implementing those little stretch bands that kind of get clipped in there. Uh, so I kind of expected this, but I'm surprised that those are the only two uh, things holding them into the package. I figured there'd be something on the upper torso holding them in there. Because uh, this is a very heavy figure, um, all things considered. And a lot of times on the heavier figures, uh, really, unless the bubble that they put them in uh, is really, really tight around the figure. They usually have some kind of a um, tie down around the waist or even around the neck to better secure the figure because these heavier ones do have a very high chance of tipping over or popping out of the bubble with, you know, a drop or a shake or something. So let's go ahead and pull them out. There we go. Bubble's starting to yellow right there, which is very odd. It's just in that one corner, so uh, likely some sun damage. So that's okay. Makes me feel even better about getting them open and out. Okay, so first off, the texture, the feel of this thing is very... Um, it almost feels like chalk, if that makes sense. Um, so that's a little weird. Um, it's not like the smoothest texture... It's not real shiny, so there's not like a lot of gloss. It's, it's, it's a very matte color. Um, the arms seem to be a little bit of a lighter shade of red. Almost like they're coated in a white. Like a... I don't know. I mean, it's not because it's not coming off. But as you can see, like, literally the arms are wider than the torso. So that's a little weird. Um, there's separation here, as if you can move it. But I'm pushing on it right now, and nothing. You know, you can hear it pop a little bit. Um, like, maybe it's supposed to turn. But, man, it gets... Oh, there... Oh. Oh. You hear that? Those are so tight. Oh. Oh, there's not... Yeah, there's not much movement there at all. And, like, really, like, what are you going to do? Like... Pose with his arms back or something, because you can't even, like, oof. You know what? I'm not going to turn the other arm. I'm afraid I'm going to just break the damn thing off. Um, 
doesn't look like there's any uh, separation in the leg joints at all, so no articulation there whatsoever. Um, not going to stand very well either, um, oddly enough. Okay, so the other arm's loose now. Uh, yeah, no movement in the middle of the torso. Uh, yeah, um, and there's no, no uh, peg holes in the feet. That's kind of a disappointment because even if the, the top heaviness of this figure weren't an issue, you could still have a peg hole or something there uh, to put it on some kind of a figure stand of sorts. Um, so I don't know, maybe you got to put the arms back a little bit to maybe distribute the weight a little bit more to make it where he stands on his own. Because if you put the arms forward a little bit, he just falls right over. So arms back, chest out, DDP yoga style or something. So um, the face looks good on it. Pretty accurate with the cartoon. Overall, the actual design and aesthetic of the figure is pretty nice. Uh, nothing too complex, which I didn't really expect. Um, I kind of wish they would have made the horns actually plastic separation all the way over to the back rather than it looking just kind of like some painted on external tights for a wrestler. Um, the white chalkiness of the arms and the leg is, is very weird because it's not on the torso at all. It's just on the arms and the legs. Um... But all in all, it's a pretty cool looking figure. I'm going to have to find some way to maybe dremel a hole in the bottom of the foot in order to put him on some kind of a stand so I feel more comfortable with him being inside the detox. Like I say, he's pretty heavy. I mean, there's a lot of... Uh, I mean, it's not quite as heavy as, like, let's say, the Buzz Lightyear by McFarlane. But it's pretty close. And you definitely don't want that thing falling over on one of the actual shelves in the Detov. So he may be something I end up putting on the bottom shelf. That way, if he falls over, no harm, no foul. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up on this particular unboxing. Um, if I had to give this thing a, a retro rating, I'd probably have to give it about a 6. And that's purely on aesthetics alone. It just looks great. Um, the overall design of it. Like I said, the colors are off-putting, and that hurts a little bit. The lack of posability is definitely a downer for me. Um, but a cool figure if you have any South Park uh, stuff at all. This would go nice with some Funko Pops or something like that. So uh, who knows? Uh, if you're looking for something like this, now you know they exist. Just check it on eBay. I'm sure you can probably find one there. I never even bothered checking secondary market on this thing to see what it's even valued at. I just... I got it because it looked cool, and like I said, it's kind of an inside joke with me and my wife. Um, but yeah, I, I I do like the character, so I figured, why the hell not? Great addition to the Detoff. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this retro review. Thank you guys for joining. Remember to follow me over on my social media platforms at TikTok and Instagram at Collecting Raj. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that like button. But as always, guys, thank you again for joining me, Evil Morty and Regular Morty and Satan. And have yourselves... An awesome week.